Hi, this is Ron Koof, Customer Service Technician with ESU. Today we're going to learn how to program locomotives with our ESU ECOS command station. First thing we're going to do is put our locomotive on our programming track. Once the locomotive is placed on the track, we'll press the button. Looks like a little wrench on either one of the throttles, doesn't matter which one. And we're going to create a new loco. We're going to create it manually. And then this is your main screen. First thing we're going to do is we're going to read all the data from the locomotive into the ECOS. To do that, go to Advanced. And this is your Information tab. Make sure it says Programming Track. And then hit the Start button. It will read all of the CV values from the decoder into the ECOS. When the ECOS is finished reading, it'll state decoder read successful. It'll show you the manufacturer, detected decoder type, and number of changeable CVs at the bottom here. Very first thing we want to do, we want to go ahead and press the locomotive number button, which is right here. And you can see the short address is 3 for this locomotive. The long address is 2012. It is currently set up for 28 speed steps. Now, down here at the bottom, long DCC address is not checked. So this locomotive, as it is, will respond to address number three. If we want it to actually respond to address 2012, or if we want to change that to something else, we need to make sure that long DCC address is checked. Otherwise, it will only respond to your short CV address. After you make a change like that, you need to write it to the decoder. The button here with the piece of track and a down arrow will write any information you have changed. Now, before we do anything else, let's check and make sure we have control of our locomotive. Press the green checkbox. When you get back to your main screen, notice on your throttle this is the user-friendly name, only stored in the ECOS. I'll show you how to change that in a moment. This here is what protocol we're using, DCC 28 speed steps for this locomotive. And this is the number that it's addressing, 2012, since we picked the long address. Let's just make sure, even though we're on the programming track, we can test it and see if we have control of the locomotive. So let's just see if we've got forward and reverse. Good to go. Good to go. Now, also notice your function buttons here just have the letter F. I'm going to show you here in a moment how you can change those to be a little more user friendly. Now that we're sure we have control of our locomotive, we can click on the wrench key again. And this time, since we've already created the loco, we're going to edit the loco. It'll bring up the same window. Again, advance, there's your startup. First thing we're going to do is if you go to the Properties tab, this is where you can actually choose the icons for your functions. You can also enable or disable a function. You can make it a permanent latching button or a momentary button. You can also invert whether the button is pressed or not pressed. You can also test it. F1 is currently set for the bell, so if we test it, and that is set up as a permanent button. But let's make this a little easier to understand. Let's press the down button, and you have a whole list of icons here that you can choose from. We'll find one that looks like a bell, tap it, 
Now that icon will show up in your function list when we get back to the throttle. Let's do the same thing with the horn. We'll come down here, find the air horn. Now the air horn you want to be momentary. You only want it to blow when you press the button. And here we can test it. And the last one will change for now. We'll go over to F8, which turns our sound on and off. And we'll just change that to the little speaker icon. And that is also a permanent button. Now all of these functions are saved in the ECOS. All these icons are saved in the ECOS. So we'll go ahead and hit the check button. And as you'll notice here on our panel, we now have our light, our bell, our horn, and our sound button. One thing I should mention, if you want to delete a locomotive after you add it, you just hit your wrench button again, delete loco, and say, yes, I want to delete it. As you put locomotives in the system, when you click on the select button, you will see a new list of all of your locomotives. Over here on the left, it'll show you what the long address is. Here in the center, it'll give you your user-friendly name. Let me show you how to change that. Press your wrench button. Let's go to Edit Loco. And right here on the Edit Loco list, it says Name. Press your keyboard. Hit the backspace button and delete what's in there and type in whatever you want. In this case, I am going to say Conrail 2012. Got to take the caps lock off. Press the green checkbox. Press the green checkbox again. And now you can see the name of this locomotive is showing up here at the top. Also, when you hit the select button, you'll see now it says Conrail 2012. One of the most basic features of any command station is the ability to change individual CV values within the decoder. To accomplish this on your ECOS command station, press the Setup tab, and then go to Setup 2. Make sure mode is set for the programming track and your locomotive is sitting on the program track. Here you can choose which CV you want to change. Let's look at the value of CV48. By changing the value of CV48 in an ESU decoder, you can select different prime movers, you can select different horns, you can select different bells. So if you want to see what the value of that is, just type in CV48 and press the read button. It'll say reading CV48 and the value is zero. If you want to change it, you simply type in what you want to change it to. You can use the keypad over here and you tell it to write. Another example would be if you're having problems with your decoder, you can set CV8 to 8, and that will do a factory reset on your decoder. So again, 8 to 8, press the right button, and that's all there is to it. And that's how you read a locomotive, change its parameters, and save it using our ecosystem. If you have any questions, please refer to our website in the documentation. And as always, thank you for spending some time with us.